Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Peter Popovich and I'm an optometrist here at Lawless Eye and Vision. I'm here to talk to you about dry eye syndrome and dry eye treatment this evening. So when we talk about dry eye, it's not only um, the symptom of dryness, it's actually a whole group of symptoms and it's ultimately caused by a lack of tear layer. So I'd like you to ask yourself some questions. Does your vision ever fluctuate you know, from day to day? Do your eyes ever tire or feel fuzzy when reading? Do your eyes ever feel um, watery or, or and cause blurred vision? If you answer yes to any of these questions, you likely have dry eye syndrome. So a lot of the common symptoms, dryness, stinging, burning, you know, gritty sensation are very common, but other common symptoms include watery eyes as well as fluctuating blurry vision. And that's because this tear layer on the front of the eyes is not in good quality. So when we're looking at the tear layer, our, our tear layer is not just water. There's actually three different components. You can see in some of these images here um, that there's an oil layer or a lipid layer that covers the front, coats the very front of the tear layer, a watery layer that kind of fills the middle, and then a mucus layer. So if any one of these three components isn't in good quality, um, your tears won't be ideal. And so when we're looking at your eyes, we'll see signs of dry eye. We'll look at the oil glands in your eyelid, and you can see the, the picture in the lower left screen. Um, and you can see where someone's glands are kind of backed up. The oil is kind of backed up in the glands. On the lower right, you can see um, little pieces of debris floating in the eye, as well as pockets of irritation. And that, again, is caused by a lack of tear layer. So what are the risk factors for dry eye syndrome? Um, you know, anyone can have dry eye, but common risk factors include people that are over 50, um, people who are female, contact lens wearers, as well as um, people who don't get enough vitamin A or omega-3 fatty acids in their diet. And then certain autoimmune conditions can also cause dry eye. We're looking at treatment for dry eye, um, first off, we a lot of times tell people to reduce their risk factors, especially screen time. We're finding that a lot of digital devices now cause dry eye to get a lot worse, removing makeup appropriately at the end of the day, as well as avoiding um, air blowing across the face through fans or, or even like CPAP machines. So on the, the note of screen time, it is very important to blink often. Frequent blinking allows for the uh, tear layer to come out of the, the glands in our eyelids. So we're finding that people who stare at computer screens and uh, you know read excessively or work uh, at near excessively, they, they tend to blink a lot less and this causes the dry eye to be worse. When we're looking at dry eye treatment, um, for mild dry eye, oftentimes we'll start off with artificial tears. It, this doesn't actually do anything in terms of treating the underlying condition, but it can add moisture to your eyes and help kind of alleviate some of your symptoms. So that's kind of a baseline therapy. One important note is we always tell people to avoid redness relievers such as Visine and Clear Eyes. These have harmful chemical agents in them that can cause your dry eye to actually get worse. So it's important to, to avoid those products. Um, there's also warm compresses which can be just a warm washcloth or even um, masks you can buy over the counter that can retain the heat on the eyelids as well as eyelid scrubs. So all these um, products help people with just basic level dry eye and hopefully help just make the eyes more comfortable. When these products fail, um, there are more advanced therapies that your eye care provider can give you. Uh, and some of those include topical steroids, dry eye medications like Restasis and Zydra, and a few others that we'll discuss here at the end of the presentation. So topical steroids decrease inflammation on the surface of the eyes and are very effective, but can only be used short term due to potential side effects. Some of these side effects include glaucoma, increased eye pressure, and cataract formation. So we can only use these for a brief period of time to get people through uh, some difficult episodes of dry eye. So for people that need more long-term medications, we do switch them to these medications called Ristasis and Zydra. Both of these medications also decrease inflammation at the surface of the eye, but also help increase your tear production as well. So they're very effective for good candidates.
And then moving beyond, you know, eye drops, we do have a lot more tools now than we did before for treating dry eye. And one of these is a specialized contact lens that covers the entire eye. And this can actually allow you to have moisture on the eye throughout the day. So you can see in the lower left portion of the screen, um, a little reservoir pool that the contact keeps on the eye throughout the day. This also protects the eye from environmental factors that worsen your dry eye. And this also can be used long term. Another uh, procedure we do is called Blefex. And this is an eyelid exfoliation procedure. So essentially we use a, a special tool just to help um, reduce inflama inflammation and particles that build up on the eye. And this helps keep those oil glands clear and open. And this also is a repeatable, repeatable procedure. And this allows us to you know, effectively treat the dry eye. And lastly, we have a, a great new technology here at Lawless Eye Vision called LipaFlow. And essentially, this is an advanced heating procedure that works like a warm compress, but it's more effective at getting deep inside the glands. You can see the uh, images on the top of the screen where we have a normal eyelid. You can see all those little white lines of, on the lower eyelids. And in the, the left side, you can see where the oil glands are normal. And these oil glands um, are, are very uh, productive in, in allowing the tear layer to be produced. On the right side of the screen, you can see where some of these lines are, are not present. And that indicates eyelid um, atrophy and gland atrophy. So that means that no eyelid um, secretions are being produced in those areas. So through this procedure, it's a 12-minute procedure. We apply these little panels to the eyes, and it effectively clears the glands out and allows them to operate more effectively. And so this procedure is like a warm compress that lasts for a long period of time. So a warm compress, we typically recommend you know, people do it one to two times daily. This can actually last for up to one to two years. Um, so it's very effective for people with dry eye. And this also is repeatable. So just some final thoughts on dry eye syndrome. I hope we all learned that you know dry eye is not just dryness, but many other symptoms, um, especially those symptoms of excessive uh, tearing or watery eyes, as well as you know fluctuating blurry vision are signs of dry eye. So if you or anyone else that you know are, are, is having these symptoms, I welcome you to come into Lawless Eye and Vision and be tested for dry eye. We have all these treatment therapies that we discussed today here at, at KSB Lawless Eye and Vision. And um, if you have any questions or anything else, you, you're welcome to email me or uh, contact our office. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a good evening. Thank you for coming.